To the Point with Michael Williams. The suicide recently of 12-year-old Rebecca Sedwick in Polk County places new emphasis on bullying as two other girls, 12 and 14, are charged with aggravated stalking in her death. Good morning and welcome. With the recent suicide case in Florida and the subsequent arrest of those two girls, we're going to take a look at bullying and cyberbullying and the parental role in preventing it and protecting all of our children. Joining me, Dr. Sandra Munoz, a mental health therapist and the CEO of the Children's Healing Institute in West Palm Beach. We thank you for being our guest today on To The Point. Thank you for having me. We're going to jump into bullying and cyberbullying, but for people unfamiliar, talk about the scope of issues you see out there and the mission of Children's Healing Institute. Well, the Children's Healing Institute is a nonprofit organization, and we really work hard to strengthen families who are facing crises, challenge, and change with the goal of preventing child abuse. Mm -hmm. Everybody has risk factors. Mm -hmm. None of us are immune to risk factors. Some parents have them more than others, but I think what offsets other parents is they have some really good uh, protective factors, if you will, some resources in place. So what we see is a lot of families that come through our doors mm -hmm. that have those risk factors. They don't have a good support system. They don't know how to navigate the, you know, the system, how to advocate for their children. They don't have any of the family that they can turn to. They really don't know what to do in some situations. So they seem to be at a loss, and that really puts them at higher risk for things like having their children be abused or having their children exposed to bullying. They don't know what to do when they're confronted with those situations. And you all try to provide them with those tools. Correct. We try to educate them on how to provide some safety features for their children. Talk about some of those safety features, then let's talk about bullying and how bad it is today compared to, say, 10 years ago as we get deeper and deeper into mm -hmm. an Internet world. What are some of the chief tools parents need to be aware of and a community is large, at large in case that bullying is going on without enough supervision in the home from the parents? Exactly. I think the one thing that parents need to be aware of is that you really need to have some open communication with your children. Uh, children right now, over 70% of them have access to some type of internet device, whether it's a computer or a smartphone. And right now, if parents aren't monitoring what's going on, that just opens the door mm. to a bunch of strangers pretty much coming in through their home. Is bullying worse in your mind than it was 10 years ago because of the impact of all these tools that your children may have that you may not even be aware of their use of those tools? Bullying is a lot easier. Mm -hmm. A lot of bullies, if you, there was a research done, 80% of bullies say they do it online because they can get away with it. 80%? 80%. It's a lot easier to be bullied online. They're getting away with it. And the scary and thing... And are those threats or just picking on them, calling them names? Uh, when you say bullying, talk about that a little more. Bullying can be all of that. It can be, you know, where you're torturing somebody verbally, physically, mentally. You're either spreading rumors. You can mm -hmm. be threatening to hurt them physically. Um, it's picking on the weaker person, on the weaker child, because either you want to be popular, it makes you feel good, you can get away with it. And the scary thing is, I think, especially with cyberbullying, is you don't know who the other person is. Mm -hmm. We've seen cases where the bully was actually the parent bullying a child. But sometimes, many times, you may know who they are, but feel you can't get away from them. You can't even be in the comfort of your own home. If you go online, you're being bullied. Right. The impact of that spreads 80%. That's a stunning number to me. 80% of the bullying that goes on now has some root in online bullying. Yes, because bullies can get away with it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So, Parents are going to say, what on earth can I do? Pandora's box has been open. We live in a cyber world, a world wide web. So you talked about this earlier, but dig a little deeper what parents are supposed to do to try and do that short of unplugging every computer in the house. I think you really need to start having the conversations mm -hmm. with your children. You need to talk to them about, you know, like the, the recent news stories that we're hearing, especially mm -hmm. with the bullying case. Use that as a teaching tool. Talk to your child. You know, what, what do you think about this case? What went on here? Do you know someone in your class that's being bullied? Has this happened to you? Doctor, sometimes children will go into a shell. They won't want to talk to mom or dad. What should a parent look for in their son or daughter that maybe aren't verbal signs? They're not coming up to mom and or dad and saying, I'm being bullied. But what should you look for? Change in behavior. Are they losing sleep at night? Are they losing interest in things that they normally like to do? Maybe they, they don't want to go to school. Exactly. Maybe they don't want to go to school. Maybe they close the computer when you walk in the door. Or they could kind of, you know, mm. squeamish when they see some message pop on the computer. You really need to have the computer in an area where you can see it as a parent. But smartphones, you're out and about. So how do you exactly. sit down with your children and say it's so important to come to mom and her dad or a caregiver, somebody who cares about you, then the family you can trust? Uh, to take care of that because you're not in the home a lot and we're all mobile now. We're all mobile. Kids receive 420 texts a, text a week. 
three times That's more a than adults. Average. That is a national average. Three times more than what their parents receive. And I think you really need to start talking to your kids about what information is going on online, what they can be exposed to. So either your child tells you I'm being bullied or the signs you talked about, you discover something's amiss. You talked about this earlier. What's the first thing the parents should do? If you know that your child is being bullied or your child comes to you and is telling you that they're having an issue, first you need to stop, listen, focus, pay attention. Don't judge them. Don't tell them to get over it. Don't mm. tell them, oh, it'll be okay. Don't worry about it. Really listen to what they're saying because when a child comes to you, it takes a lot of courage usually for that child to even open up. So you need to gather the facts, who, what, where, when, and take that information. If it's happening at the school, go and talk to the teacher. Go and talk to the principal. If you don't get the answers that you want, work your way up the ladder from there. What about if it's happening down the street? Do you go talk to their parents first? Uh, what is your advice then? Sometimes people feel uncomfortable. It's the kids down the street. No, you need to go and talk to the parents because mm -hmm. your child's safe, your child's, sure. you know, well-being can be at risk. So you definitely want to have that conversation with the parents. And unfortunately, sometimes you wind up with parents who are bully themselves. Mm -hmm. So when those situations happen, sometimes, unfortunately, we need to call in, you know, some law enforcement and report it. When do you know that it's appropriate time to do that? I mean, most people say they're, they're obviously there are certain clear markers, but sometimes I'm being picked out online and you don't see, uh, hopefully, that your child's been physically abused. At what point? You talked about this earlier. Parents sometimes don't know when do I step in, how deeply do I step in, how quickly do I go up the flagpole from trying to talk to either the school or another parent to calling in law enforcement. Exactly, and I think the most important thing to realize is as a parent is all children have different thresholds. Mm -hmm. what, could, what one child can deal with perhaps another child can't and that's a conversation that you need to start having with your kid if you see that your child is being affected emotionally by it it's truly bothering them and then you need to step up to the plate and you have to be careful too with the child who decides to respond to bullying by escalating the confrontation themselves either online or in person and we've exactly. seen that happen right you cannot take care of violence with violence especially now in society the way it is because you don't know how far that violence is going to escalate how often does a parent realize or have the self-awareness to say it's my child who is the bully a lot of times they don't know and they're sometimes they're surprised by it. what do you it. look for there as a parent what are, are there any signs there you talked about the child who's being victimized but what about the victimizer what should parents be aware of there you know, and that's a tougher call. It's a tougher call for that because you may not be aware of it. It may take the other parent coming to you mm -hmm. and saying, you know what, your child is doing this to that. And for that parent, if another parent is coming to you because they're having an issue with your child, listen to them. They're not there to pass judgment. They're, they're trying to come to some sense of how do we work together to resolve this so that our kids can get along better. Talk about this. In the case of Rebecca Sedwick in Polk County, the stepmother, we saw a horrendous video last week. You commented on it for our broadcast last week. The stepmother of one of the accused bullies is arrested. You see a video where she's beating two children in her care, allegedly. That's what the video seems to show. That's the charge. And it appears that at least one of her youngsters may be there and watching, looking on. So some kids come from an environment where this is what they're learning at home. How, how do we cope with that? Exactly. And that's such a sad situation because as parents, you are the first role models that your children have. So if you are answering whatever's going on in your life with the violence, and then that's what your children are learning. And we need to be responsible parents. We need to be able to address the situation, whatever we're going through, whatever risk factors we're mm -hmm. facing, we need to have those coping mechanisms in place that are not violent. You can't live by the motto, do as I say, not what I do. Kids are going to do what you do. You talked at the outset. You've touched on it. Let's use our remaining few minutes. Let's back up again. Parents watching this saying at some point or another, I'm worried or my child's been bullied. Uh, goodness forbid, they, they may be bullied down the road. Talk about the conversation we have to have with our children, both those who are bullied and those who might be the bullies, and then the resources, again, that are out there and where people need to turn, including your group. Exactly. Most importantly, like you said, have the conversation with your children. If you find, if you feel that something's going on with your kid, discuss with them, you know, use teaching opportunities that we're seeing in the media right now. Have the open conversation with them about what do you see in this case? How does that make you feel? Have you seen it with one of your friends? Has it happened to you? Are you part of the group that may be picking on another kid? Exactly. Are you part of the group that's maybe picking on a group? We need to teach our kids empathy. Sometimes children nowadays with so many violent videos, they're desensitized to what violence is. And this notion of just tough it out or you've got to grow up and you've got to deal with some who like you and some don't. I mean, there is truth to that. We all right. have to develop somewhat of a thick skin, but there's a far different 
scenario between having to develop the fact that you're going to have cliques at school and, and in life and in social and professional circles and being outright bullied and threatened. Exactly, and that's a conversation to have to your children. Not everybody's going to like you, but there's a difference between not liking you and wanting to on purpose torment you and make you feel bad and belittle you and you know make you feel like you're a victim when you have those kids that have those bad feelings and they come to you and then that's when you really need to step up to the plate and your group specifically is in the prevention business and bullying is a big part of what you see a much bigger part than it used to be bullying is a lot bigger part because of technology right now we want to put up a website talk about this yours is a resource that any parent can call to get information yes we okay. are the children's healing institute mm -hmm. org. Mm -hmm. we welcome families to come onto our website and learn website about right the resources that we have we do um, in-home parenting where we try to t teach parents mm -hmm. you know coping skills protective factors if there is bigger issues going on we certainly are there to refer parents to other resources in the community another great resource for parents i would say is call 211 you know they're a great organization to call just to find mm -hmm. out if you're trying to find out where to turn to right away but call for that help no call. no no legitimate concerns too small if you can't give them direct help you can direct them to other resources that might be able to don't let it fester exactly never be afraid to reach out for help you need to get the right people on your team to help you raise your children dr sandra munoz ceo of children's healing institute thank you so much i know we always just scratch the surface but we hope we've given people some resources and most of all opening up those line of communications at home thank you so much for thank being you, our Michael. guest we appreciate, appreciate it Come